Please welcome Betaworks founder John Borthwick and TechCrunch's Alexia Sotsis. Hi, everybody. Hi, John Borthwick. Hey, Alexa. Congrats on Instapaper. Thank you. Um, you going to shut it down? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I mean, we, um, no. <laughs> um, I, I love Instapaper. You know, I, um, when Marco, going all the way back to when he left Tumblr, you know, I reached out to him about Instapaper. Um, you know, I think it's, uh, it's a it's a wonderful product. It's a wonderful brand. Uh, it is an important piece of sort of what I see as an emerging ecosystem of products. Some of which we're building at BetaWorks. Some of which we've seen invested in, but that you know relates to the sort of future of news and the future of media. And so we're going to build. Uh, how did that happen? Um, how did that happen? Um, you know, it was, uh, I got an email from Marco. I mean, he, he described it on his blog, and he's spoken about it over the weekend. I think there was a podcast where he spoke about it a little bit. Um, I got an email from him, at, uh, which came in, I think, at about 2 a.m., and um, uh, I got it the following morning, and he said that he was, you know, lying awake and trying to figure out, you know, how he could balance his priorities between He's got the magazine, he's got some new things that he wants to work on, he's got a family, and he's got Instapaper. And Instapaper you know, has a uh, you know, phenomenally loyal and uh, avid user base. Um, it's actually a business, and so he's making, uh, he's making good money, he's making about a million dollars off to Apple's take. Um, so a million dollars in profit a year? So, so yeah, yeah, which is, um, which is amazing. And, and he was trying to figure out, okay, how, what, what do I do with this? And as a, as a developer, I mean, I think, you know, Instapaper for me falls into one of the guys on the team, Sam, said that, you know, it's almost like a piece of art. It's like one of those pieces of software that was so simple and that sort of redefined how you would read things and, you know, sort of managing your reading list online. Um, and Marco is, you know, he's a phenomenal um, creator, uh, maker, and... Uh, so he said in the email, as he said, look, I, I want to grow it up, but I don't want to manage a team and do it uh, and raise money. And so I've been stuck for a bit, but then it just came to me at 2 o'clock in the morning, Betaworks. So <laughs> I'm glad. 2 a.m. Yes, I'm glad. That, <laughs> 2 that came Betaworks to me at, at 2 a.m. also. I, I like that. That's Betaworks. Good. So, um, so. Was the then, email at 2 a.m.? Uh, the email was at 2 a.m. So then we got, you know, he came in and, uh, you know, we sat down with him and, uh, yeah, you know, Marco, Sam, and I, uh, literally, we, we've, in the conference room, we've got a table. There's an IKEA table, which, uh, which you can write on. It's sort of a writable surface. And we sketched out the, the deal right there. And we just said, let's do this. And uh, we had lots of things to you know, uh, get organized, and you know, there was legal stuff to be done. But the basic architecture of the deal you know, and what we decided to do happened in you know, an hour and a half. Um, How much did you buy it for? I'm not telling what you. What was that, the so. basic architecture <laughs> yeah. of the deal? Oh, I, I'll tell you. As Marco's talked about this, you know, we both came into this with a set of principles. And so, you know, from Marco's side is that he wanted to do something that aligned us for the long term. Secondly is, is that he didn't want to spend a whole ton of time on it in the long term. He wanted to be sort of there as the spiritual godfather and still involved. He's got a long list of things that he wants to do for next rev of the iPad, iPhone, and website. But um, uh, we would take on responsibility for building those things. And then what we wanted was we wanted to be aligned so that if we you know, made more than a million dollars, you know, continue to grow the revenue, he would be happy about that, we'd be happy about that. So we've got a you know, very simple structure, which is sort of you know, a, a combination of um, you know, we have the majority ownership and there's some rev share, and we go forward and we're going to build this thing. So you've now got your first money-making product. Uh, lots of changes at uh, Betaworks. You started as a company. You raised funding. You raised like 25, 27 million. Um, you started seed investing, but also building your own products. Now you're going to focus less on that, and, and you're going to start buying. I mean, what's, what's happening? What's going on? So. 
So, okay, so when we started Betaworks up, you know, we started up about five and a half years ago, and there was a small team of us, and we put our heads together and we said, can we create a platform for where we can build things, we can buy things, and we can seed invest off the same platform? And it's, you know, on one hand, I understand why that's so strange to people. On the other hand, I don't understand why it's so strange, because, you know, I view those things, they're just different ways of interacting with innovation, right? Building, by, building, buying, and investing. And, you know, if you speak to, you know, I remember I did an uh, interview with Kevin Rose, and Kevin was asking me about this, and he said, you know, he was, he was running his studio, Milk, at the time, so it's prime to going to, um, uh, over to Google Ventures and prior to us buying Dick. And Kevin said, you know, uh, we make things at Milk, but we don't invest. And I said to him, but you invest, right? And so he does that on his own, sort of on the side. So when we started Betaworks, I said, we're going to do everything under one roof, which sort of keeps us all aligned. And everybody on the team is focused on all of these things, whether, wherever they fall on that spectrum. So anyway, so we started out Betaworks, uh, and we set it up as a company. Uh, you know, there's a lot of precedence in, in media in particular, but also in internet businesses. Um, but in media businesses, whether it's, you know, Liberty or which, what John Malone built there, or whether it's um, IAC or Time Warner, I mean, all these companies, or Murdoch with News Corp, I mean, they started off with single properties, right? And then they, over time, they sort of, you know, built businesses, operating businesses, and then they acquired other things, and then they added to them. And when I was, you know, up at Time Warner running tech there, you know, I, I sort of appreciated be, with the team there of, of, that not everything was a wholly owned asset, right? You think Time Warner owns everything. In fact, it owns a piece of Time Warner cable, it owns a piece of this, a piece of that, minority here, minor, majority there. So it's kind of a combination of. So anyway, so that's what I'm building with, from the ground up with Betaworks. As you said, we raised about 27 million in capital. You gave it back last year? We gave it back, um, which is always a good thing. Uh, we dividended to people. Um, so we had a, um, uh, in 2011, uh, we had a, a very good year. Um, and so we gave all of our investors their money back and some, and then we filled up the tank again. And so the tank being the balance sheet, you're looking at me like, what's the tank? Yeah, what's the, you filled <laughs> what's, up the tank, okay. Where's the tank? <laughs> So we filled up the balance sheet again, put some more money on the balance sheet, and said we're going to continue doing what we're doing. So now what we have at Betaworks is a collection of things. Some we, we own big pieces of, some we own smaller pieces of, some which we own tiny pieces of. But I really think about Betaworks as this loosely coupled network of, uh, of pieces, of, of, of products that we're building. Um, and it's, there is an architecture to that. Um, but not everything needs to be wholly owned. I mean, how do you decide whether to uh, buy a company, invest in a company, or sell a company? I mean, right before this Insta paper, <coughs> buy you sold Gadget to to my boss. Um, why get rid of Gadget and bring on on Marco? So Gadget was Gadget uh, GDGT, um, uh, Peter and Ryan's G business was something we did as a seed investment. And so, you know, when we're seed investing in companies, it is you know. That's very much part of, as we think about it, as the network. Um, and so, you know, we have over the last year, there's been, Nick can tell you, but there's probably been eight to 10 companies that have been acquired in the network. Um, so there's a lot of M&A activity and raising money that's always going on around stuff that we're doing at Betaworks. But I think that, you know, in the last year, we've acquired two things that have, you know, profile, at least, to TechCrunch audience in Dig and Instapaper, uh, most of the things we do, we actually build, right? So we have a whole set of new things uh, that we've been working on for um, about half a year. And, you know, we released uh, Poncho about two weeks ago. We released something called Blend. Um, we've got something new coming this week, midweek. Um, and, um, and then we released Giphy about uh, a month ago. What's coming Six this weeks. week? Um, I, I'm not telling you. <laughs> is it your Google Reader? Uh, it's quote? not the Google Reader. No. The Google Reader um, is under development by the Dig team, and that you know would we're, we're dashing to get done in time. Um, we were blindsided a little bit by the timing of the Google announcement, and so you know when that came over the transom, we were actually we had the Reader stuff was on our roadmap. 
because it fits right between Instapaper and Dig. Um, we obviously, when the announcement happened, we couldn't talk about Instapaper because that wasn't done yet. But we said, we put out a blog post and said we're going to get into the reader space because it's an important piece of the puzzle. Um, so you're buying something like Dig or something like Instapaper, and they're not necessarily high growth assets, and yet um, after your, your Dig purchase, the company grew like 93% in, in a year, something like 75K to... Yeah, so look, I mean, uh, we, we, we love growth, right? We love building businesses. That, uh, but I think that there needs to be also a couple of... First of all, the, the key metric that we focus on is engagement, is sort of core engagement around the products, right? So there's a wonderful um, fashion blogging network called Blog Loving that you know, we identified and went out to Sweden to buy a big piece of, and then we brought the team here. And Blog Loving has this incredibly, they have about four million users, but they have, you know, uh, there's about half a million who ch check out it all the time, are living on the thing, right? So it's that highly engaged, passionate, you know, DA user or MA user or, or the weekly active users. Those metrics are the ones we focus on. Now, we love to move those numbers from hundreds of thousands to millions to tens of millions. But getting it right and getting the product mix right is you know, what's really important to us first and foremost. And then introducing monetization and then you know, building all of that as a mix. Is there a secret sauce to that? Is there a secret sauce to that? So there's a set of things that we've got at Betaworks which helps accelerate that, right? So we've got, we've got a team of people, a team of serial entrepreneurs who've done this before. We have a whole set of analytics tools, right, and data, the things that we've built, like Bitly, Chartbeat, and SocialFlow, and things internally that we have that help us sort of connect the dots and make us smarter about what we're doing. Um, we also have sort of distribution assets. So, you know, between, um, between Instapaper and between Dig, there's now we've got a sort of core database of about 12, uh, actually close to about 14 million email addresses. And so, you know, there's some core sort of distribution pieces to the puzzle too, which makes us sound a little bit more like a traditional media company. I mean, you, but those are all sort of pieces of the puzzle that is emerging. It's, it sounds like you're building a, an engine for for growth. Uh, you told me over the phone you wanted to build a grassroots AOL. Um, so thank you. Uh, Imitation is the sin most sincere form of flattery. But why? Why now? Maybe it's really hard. I mean, I think that the you know the market is uh, the market is sort of characterized by there's you know there's the big companies and then there's this incredible startup engine or system that exists you know which is funded by VC funding and that sort of grows up and is single company based. Um, but I think that if you look at the products out there, you know, I think about them more as a sort of ecosystem or clusters of of things. So there's a lot of sort of you know there's there's strong relationship between you know, the products that we build and invest in at Betaworks. They all fit together as a puzzle in some form. And so actually architecting or having a company that thinks about the puzzle instead of just trying to optimize for the single highest growth piece of the puzzle, that's what we're trying to do at Betaworks, right? It's think about the entire puzzle. And uh, we have you know, a little piece here, a little piece there, but we've got some bigger pieces in the middle. But we're thinking about the whole platform. And I think that it, sort of, it, um, it gives us a fundamentally different way that we think about um, innovation, growth, acquisitions, investments, everything we do. In Crunchface, your, your profile says that you're interested in investing in social and real-time streams. Um, I think you you might want to change that to something because you know. Yeah, so we should update on <laughs> we should update the Crunchbase profile. I mean, the I think on one hand um, everything's changed, but on the other hand it hasn't changed. I mean, it's you know we are uh, you know social has become part of the infrastructure now. It wasn't social. It wasn't that social was a trend or a fad that just sort of moved through, and now we're moving beyond it. I think that everything is becoming social. So it's become far more fundamental than I, I, most people dreamed, but it's, um, it's still of vital importance to you know, what we do and what we build. Um, and same with real time, so. So are you uh, raising more money to fulfill this? Are we this? raising more money? So we are, um, you know, 
because we have, we're sort of company of companies, right? We, the, the actual factual answer, well, there's two answers. The first is no comment, thanks, no comment, Alexia. Okay. The second answer is we're always, we're always raising money because at some combination of the holding company, in other words, Betaworks, or the individual subs that we've created, things like Bitly, Charby, and so on. You know, last year there was money raised. Every year there's been money raised into one combination of those. We've done that debt, we've done equity. So, you know, we're always trying to figure out how to optimize um, or how to like figure out you know, how capital plays in this. I mean, the good news is that we have this sort of evergreen vehicle because we have the ability to either, if we want to, we can raise more money uh, or we can sell down some existing sort of secondary positions of what we have, which is how we monetized um, uh, you know, a good deal of that dividend before. So it's like, it's like running a company. It's not so exotic. It's, um, we're becoming a company. Um, which company, which one of your assets are you selling right now? Uh, is it Tapestry? Are we selling? We're <laughs> yeah. not selling. Is anyone in the process yeah. of being acquired? Uh, I'm not telling you. You're not telling me. Um, so, does no comment just mean yes? Sorry? Does no comment just mean yes? Like I said, it's like, you know, there's, uh, there's, uh, yeah, there's, yes. Yes. <laughs> uh, what is your most interesting product of all of your collection? Oh, you know, are most interesting. So I, get, I mean, I am, um, you know, I wake up one morning and I think something new that we produce, like this, this game which is coming out this week um, is one of the most interesting and beautiful products that we've created. Or I look at something like Giphy, which, you know, we released maybe six weeks ago and uh, is sort of the first real GIF search engine on the web. Um, and so I look at some of the new stuff because there's a recency effect to the new stuff, but then I spend half a day over at Bitly or at Charbeat and I see what they're doing and I think it's fascinating and there's huge potential there. So there's, um, I'm not picking out anyone. I, I, I have, um, you know, all these products are related in my mind and so it sort of, it all fits together in that puzzle. The puzzle that fascinates. So you're releasing a game this week. I heard game. Yes. It's a game. Yeah. Right. Wonderful. Thank you, John. Yes. It was Thank wonderful. You. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Woo.